Today's topic is uh, rain. The very first prayer that the first human being ever said was, guess what? A prayer for rain? Now you don't have it on your sheets. We're not up to the sheets yet, but if you look in Pasha's Bereshit, in Pasha's Bereshit, the Torah says, Kilohimta Hashem Alaretz. Bereshit's Aleph says, God did not make rain fall on the earth. Why not? The Adam Ayin Lava to Adama. Because there was no human being to work the, the earth. So Rashi wonders, what's the connection? There was no rain on the earth, Bereshit says, because there was no human being to work on the land. Ma. What's the Kesher? Says Rashi, him tear. Why was there no rain? There was no rain because there was no human being yet created to work the land. And there was no one to acknowledge, no one to appreciate, no one to recognize the goodness of what? Rain. Only when a human being was created. The Yoda. And he knew, Shehem Tzarech Olam. He knew that the world cannot exist without what, rain. Hit Palel. The first prayer, the very first human being uttered was Tfilat Geshem. Avram, did you know this? The first prayer that first human being ever uttered says Rashi, Bereishis Aleph, Tfilat Geshem. Wow. The Yardek Shamim, and only when Adam prayed, did rain what descend. Did some chay ilanot? Did the shaman then the trees and vegetation began to what to sprout? Wow, we are Shem's partner in Tikkun Olam. Before the human being around, there was no one to appreciate the goodness of rain, and therefore Zishol did not rain. Only when the human being was created, only then he knew the importance of rain. He davened, and only then did he what? Hashem make it rain. If Man would not have prayed for rain, Tuvia. No rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. No rain. What? So it's up to us to appreciate the goodness of rain, the goodness of Hashem and the Davin, and only then did it begin to rain. What a powerful message. Now we know in Hebrew there are no synonym buns. There are no synonyms in Hebrew. Shirley, how do you say rain in Hebrew? Not Yiddish. I said Hebrew, not Yiddish. Oh, Yiddish. Geshem or Matar. Geshem or Matar. There are two ways to say rain in Hebrew. Geshem or Matar. And we know there really are no synonyms in Hebrew. So what's the difference? Pashis Noyach tells us the difference, Chava. says, Geshem al When the rain hits the ground, then it's called what? Geshem. The word Gashmiut from the word Geshem. So Pashas Noyach says, Vahiya Geshem. When is it called Geshem? Al Oretz. When the rain hits the earth, Geshem creates Gashmiut. Then it's called Geshem. But while it's in heaven, it's called what? Matar. Did you know that? Ulpan 103. You ask an Ulpan teacher, they say it's synonym, but there are no synonyms in Hebrew. So Pashas Noyak tells us, Avram here, when it hits the ground, Geshem al That causes Gashmiut, right? While it's still in heaven, it's called Matar. Rain is the tangible physical symbol of a Kurdish Baruch Shefa. Can I say Shefa in English, Larry? Yeah. Shefa, bounty. Thank you. The manifestation of God's divine goodness, divine abundance. Remember that song? Raindrops keep falling on my head. Remember that song? Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> now, Levadia Yosef was asked a question. Ben We began saying Saint Talimotl of Rocha when? The seventh of our Cheshbon, right? But let's say an Israeli goes to Borough Park now. Or a person lives in Borah Park, he's in Yisrael right now. What about Tain Tali Motel Avracha? When does he say it? When does he say it? What? Well, Yiddish? 
An Israeli goes to Borough Park now. He again saying ten talamot avrachim, but he gets to Borough Park. They're still saying the same bracha. Or the opposite, the yeshiva boy or visitor comes from Borough Park here. Does he switch? And he goes back. He switches again. So he says machlokas aposkim. But all agree that the shliach tibur must pray the nusach of that tibur. Baruch Hashem, all agree. The Mishnah says, Al tifrosh min What does that mean? If you're the Shliach Tzibur, then you must daven, Reb Shalom, where you are. So even though you're an Israeli, if you're going to Borah Park now, and you're a Shliach Tzibur, you, you can't say the Ten Talim Racha. The question is, what do you say in the private Shman Esrei? Or the other way, uh, uh, an American... Uh, Chutznik comes here and he davens for the Amit. He has to say what? Talimata. What does he do in private? Stay tuned for next Sunday. That's a cliffhanger. For next Sunday, you got to come back. Okay. <laughs> but now we're going to talk, Daniel, about why rain is even a greater miracle than Chiatametim. Very strange Gemara. And you know, when the first rain comes, raindrops keep falling on my head. You're supposed to make a bracha. You turn to your sheets on side, uh, source number one, how important rain is. And we take it for granted. You have a paper there? Two of you have a sheet? Yeah? Everyone source has. number one. Alak shamim. Rain. Absurus tovot. You hear this? When the first rain comes, it's such a good tiding, you should make a bracha. Hatov ametim. Now, do we do this today? Atov HaMetiv. How do you say that in English? Atov HaMetiv. Wow. Pretty amazing. Now what kind of rain do you make today? We make a Shechianu or a Tov HaMetiv. But what kind of rain do we make a Bracha? Any type of rain, Avram? You don't have a paper? Source number two. Omar Rabavu. Name the time of Ruch HaGashamim. What type of rain do you have to make a Bracha on? Either Shechianu or Tov HaMetiv. Mishayot, what? No, rainbows, you make a bracha zolcha habrit. That's a separate bracha zolcha habrit. But what kind of rain do you have to make a bracha on rain? So source number two says, Meimatai mevarchan alak shamim, Mishayot chosan liklikas kala. What does that mean? Mishayot chosan liklikas kala. What? Like a chosan goes in front of the kala. What does that mean? Hmm? What does a chosan kala got to do with rain? Hmm? What does that mean? What? So Rashi in source number three tells us, Abraham, what does a chos and kala got to do with rain? Huh? They get married in the rain. I know somebody, a good friend of mine, got married in the rain. Hmm? <laughs> a good dear friend of mine did get married in the rain. In the park, okay? Uh, barefoot in the park. But source number three, what does it mean? Uh, see source number three, Avram. May we say a bracha like Shamim? The Perik Aroa, Masechta Brachas, Alak Shamim Omar Tov Hametiv. Imagine that. On rain, you have to make a bracha Tov Hametiv. God is good; He does good. Or Shechianu. So, what does Chosen Kala got to do? It's a Rashi says it has to be a rain like a Chosen dances in front of the Kala. It has to be a heavy dancing rain. Isn't that amazing? Chosen Kala means. You ever see when the rain comes down hard, Daniel? It's like it's dancing. You ever seen that? It jumps up and down. Jumps up and it's like dancing. That type of rain, you have to make a bracha. If it's not that type of rain, you don't make a bracha. Like a chosen dances in front of a, in front of a kala. A heavy, powerful dancing rain. Actually, the rain that dances. Rashi quotes that in the name of his Rebbe. That's what the Gemara. That's what the Gemara means. Now, if you go to source. Uh, Number four. See source number four. Omar Yehuda Marav Arba Trichin Lahodot. Four people have to bring a carbon toda. Today we don't have a carbon toda. Instead, Chava, what do we do? Berchat Berchat Hagomel. But in days of the temple, they didn't do Berchat Hagomel. They brought a carbon toda. Toda Raba. Today we don't do that, Rav, because we ain't got a temple. We make Berchat Hagomel. Which are the four? Yer Hayam. Someone that crosses an ocean, you see that? Holchemit Boriot, 
someone that crosses what? A desert. Someone that was ill, at least three days ill. We're not talking about, you know, a slight headache. Someone that has serious illness and he got cured. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good question. It's a good question. We have to talk about that. Now that's a good question. Someone that was in a, in a Goyish jail and he got released. So those people today make Berchat HaGoma. What about a person that was put under anesthesia? That's not three days sick. But today they even make Berchat HaGoma. If you survive a, 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 a car crash. So which category does that fall under? A Cholish Genes Rap, I think, I don't know. Someone survives as a terror attack or a car crash. That's like Cholish Genes Rap, no? I mean, you were in a dangerous situation. Now, many people make a mistake. Uh, if they were not in the car with the crash, they were in the car before. Do they make a brecha de gomel? No. It's only if you were involved in the crash. Well, chas v'sholem, like that, it, last week when this rocket fell on the house that demolished and the family was saved. That's a real brecha de gomel. Let's say the people, Shalom, were not in the house when the rocket hit. They make Berch no. 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 It's only when you're actually in danger. They were mamish in the house in the middle of the night when the rocket destroyed their home. Miraculously, they were saved. They make Berch HaTagomel. If they were not home, a near miss, you are not home, then you don't make Berch HaTagomel. What about anesthesia? Well, that's a good question. If you're, going under, if you're going under, I think you should, and you wake up, I think you should say Bechat HaGomel, even though it's not three days. What? If you're going under and you're out, and never, some people don't wake up, right? That's why I have an anesthesiologist. Right, but I'm saying, Chava, if it's a local anesthesia, you don't make Bechat HaGomel. If it's a full anesthesia and you're out, then you would have to make what? Um, you would have to make a Bechat HaGomel. Right? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now look how great rain is. We take it for granted, Avram, but the, look at source number six. This will blow you away. Source number six. It's a Masech Tanit. You see that? Mm -hmm. The Talmud does not engage in, what's the word, hyperbolia? Hyperbole. Hyperbole. Thank you. Thank you. How do you say that in English? What's the difference in exaggeration and hyperbole? What's the difference? Hyperbole. Synonyms. Synonyms? Synonyms? It's a synonym to um, exaggeration. <coughs> oh, thank you. Look at source 6. Omer Ravavu. Godol Yoimak Shlomim. Are you eating this, Chava? The day of rain in Israel is greater than Tchiat What? Whoa. What? You ask anybody in the street, they'll tell you, Daniel, Tchiat HaMetim is much greater. The Talmud says, forget about it. When it rains in Pisgat Zev, I mean where? In the Kiyat Moshe? I don't know, right? It's greater than what? The revival of the dead. Why is that? The Ilot Kiyat Amesim of Tzadikim. Revival of the dead will only benefit whom? The Tzadikim. It will not benefit the wicked. They'll remain dead. Bekshamim, but rain... Bein tzadikim, bein rishayim. Rain benefits the tzadikim and also what? The wicked. Where Tchiyas HaMesim only benefits the tzadikim. So you see that rain is a greater miracle because the wicked also benefit. Wow. That's pretty amazing, right? What? I'm saying what happens to... You say the rain... The the is only for the tzadikim. Yes, but... What was about the Benoni, the people that I'm like... When you come to this class, you're a tzaddik. You come to this class, you're a tzaddik. Oh, uh, that's it. If you, yes, if you, one, yeah. Okay, I'm a bit more what? Right, but that's a separate topic. I only have an hour, so... <laughs> Bill um, raised a great question. In this regard, a tzaddik is, if you look in the, in, in the Gemara Masech the Sanhedrin, Tchiat HaMesim are for those people that believe in Tchiat HaMesim. Those people that don't believe in Tchiat HaMesim, 
will not be woken up. It's not a punishment. We create our own reality. My Rebbe Zatzal would say, Rapam Zatzal would say, someone that believes in Tchiyat HaMesim never really dies. Should I repeat that? Someone who believes in Tchiyat HaMesim never really dies. Because he creates a reality that goes beyond the grave. We create our own reality, positive or negative. But if you don't believe in Tchiyat HaMesim, then God says, what do you want from me? You create your own reality. So we believe in it, going to happen to us because we created it for ourselves but if you don't believe in it then right you want to know what's going on in Olam Emet if you don't have Mishnah if you want to know what's going on in the upper world it's up to you Heaven or hell, what's waiting? It's up to you. We create our own heaven or hell. God created the physical world for us to create what? The spiritual world. The world is a stage for us to create eternity. It's up to us. That's pretty incredible, right? Now, the Gemara in tells us God chooses to run the universe through uh, messengers. You look in the book of Daniel, he chooses to govern the world through heavenly messengers. But there are three keys that God does not hand over to a heavenly messenger. The key to childbirth, the key to rain, which is also Pranasa, Geshem Gashmius, the key to Geshem, which symbolizes Gashmius, and the key to what? Triatametim. Those three keys God does not hand over to a messenger. The rest of the universe he chooses to govern Ebenezer through messengers. But rainfall, childbirth, and Triata Mason, rainfall and cruise Parnassa, those tasks God does not hand off. He does it himself. Tosfot asked the question, didn't we see El Yon Lovi resurrected the dead? And Elisha resurrected the dead? And also, Leon Novi, didn't he stop the rain? So what are you saying if God never handed off the keys? You have everyone hear the question yeah, Tosa yeah, says? Yeah. So he, Tosa says, sometimes he does it on temporary basis. And then he takes the key back. He gave Elijah and Elisha the key temporarily, but he didn't let him keep it. Okay? He didn't let him keep it. All right? But anyway, we see that Parnosa Gashmiut is under the heading of Geshem, and that's controlled directly by, by what? By a Kudosh Baruch Hu. He does not hand that off. Now, <clears throat> many people say, Tchiat HaMesim, it's so fantastic. Come on, you're pulling my leg. Chas v'shalom. In the Haftorah Avram that we read yesterday, all my troubles, it wasn't that long ago. Yesterday we read an amazing Aftorah, Yeshayo Mem Aleph. But if you read the English, you won't get it. I don't think you have it on your sheets, your sheets but it's on yesterday's Aftorah, Isaiah 41, where the Hebrew says, Al Tiri Talat Yaakov. Do not fear caterpillar Yaakov. Why does God call me a caterpillar for? I understand the Russian eagle. No, the Russian bear, excuse me. Russian, Russian bear, American the American eagle. But God calls us caterpillar Yaakov. Mite Yisrael, those of you that are dead in Israel. I'm going to help you, says God. So the Kabbalists wonder, Avram, why does God in Isaiah 41, yesterday's of Torah, call us a caterpillar? A caterpillar. Talat is a caterpillar. Mete Yisrael, those of you that are dead in Israel. So the Kabbalists explain that the secret of revival of the dead is in nature. It's the caterpillar, the cocoon, and the butterfly. Isn't that incredible? Caterpillar crawls into a cocoon. What's a cocoon? It's actually a kever, no? How do you say kever? It's a tomb. What happens to the caterpillar from it? It, it de decomposes, metamorphosizes. And out comes what? Butterfly. That's a dogma for what? 
And therefore God calls us not a Russian bear or an American eagle. He calls us Talas Yaakov. That's the secret of Tchiat The caterpillar in the cocoon decomposes. When time comes, out comes a butterfly. If God can do that for a butterfly, the caterpillar, he can't do it for us. It's built into nature already. Mitei Yisrael, those of you that are dead in Israel, God says, don't be afraid. I will help you. Don't believe me, God says, look at the Talat. Yesterday's of Torah. Yesterday's of Torah. Pretty amazing. Wow. Now, we begin asking for rain right about Pasha's Noah, don't we? Zion Machesh is right about Pasha's Noah. We ask for beneficial rain, not Noah's type of rain. Right? There's rain and there's rain, right? Now, the Orach HaShulchan asks an interesting question. The Eretz Yisrael, we begin saying, Talimota Rocha, Mizayin Machesh Von. Why did we wait two weeks until after Tfilas Geshem? We daven for Geshem Zizl when? Shmini Atzeres. Why did we delay praying for rain until what? Zion Mar Cheshvon. Bibnei She'eretz Yisrael Tzricha Mota Tekev Achrachag. Israel needs rain immediately after Shmini Atzeres. Why don't you ask me Yad Achrachag? What are you waiting for? So the Talmud says, Bishvil Oyler Regolim. There's a covered wagon train. Right? So after the Chag, the people that came up from where? From Bovel, by wagon train, they have to go back home. It takes them at least two weeks to what? To get back to Babylon, Long Island. We don't want them to get caught in the, in the pouring rain. So we wait two weeks after Shmini Atzeres to get the covered wagons. Remember wagon train? To get home. But he says, the Orach HaShulchan says, but today there ain't no covered wagons. And there ain't no Beis HaMikdash. So what do you wait two weeks for? This, what? Training. training for what? For the covered wagons? Yeah. The new train <laughs> takes 28 minutes. Doesn't take two weeks. It takes 28 minutes. You the question, Yael? So why don't we dab them? We need rain desperately. Why do you delay two weeks for? He says, What does that mean? How do you say it in English? What does that mean? But why not? The, the reason doesn't apply anymore. What is it? It says, We've got to wait for the coven wagons to get back to Babylon. But today there ain't no coven wagons. There's no. And there's no base of Mikdash anyway. So he gives a doichik territory to Shulchan. Loy nishtana hatakana. We can't change the minhag. Oh, it's not a minhag, it's a takana. I don't know why. why well, you need a bigger bezdin, I guess, right? We'll talk more about that next Sunday. Of why we see that the Ramban, I'll point out next Sunday, give you the Marama Komot. It's amazing. The Ramban held to you. Nachmanides, that Bezman Azeh, you should start saying Talamoto when? Shmini Atzeres at night. He was voted down. The question is, why was he voted down? That's a cliffhanger for, uh, for next Sunday. But today, we're going to talk about the blessings for, for Geshem. Now, either you say Hatova Hametiv, or you make a Shechayanu, that's if you're really moved by rain, if you're really moved by it. And has to be a heavy dancing rain, and you're impressed, you make a Shechianu, or you make a Tova Metiv. Now, what kind of bracha is it? Shechianu, a Tova Metiv. We know one of the seven rabbinic mitzvahs, the rabbis created seven mitzvahs, Chava. One of them was brachas. Under the category of brachas, there are three categories of brachas. The mitzvah to make brachas. The only Torah mitzvah is what? Berchat HaMozon and Berchat HaTorah. But all the other brachas that we make Avram is what? Rabbinic. rabbinic. But the rabbinic mitzvah to make brachas <coughs> is what? Split into three. Berchat HaMitzvah, Berchat HaNenin, Berchat Shevach V'Hadayah. 
Berachat mitzvah means before I do a mitzvah between man and God, I what? Make a bracha. Right? A lady goes to the mikvah, she makes a bracha, we shake a lulav and esrik, talus tilin, we make a bracha, right? That's berachat mitzvah. Berachat hanenin, before you enjoy an apple or an orange or, a, or any food, berachat hanenin, or you smell a rose, make a bracha, berachat hanenin. Then there's berachat shevach v'hoidaya. When you see Niagara Falls or a shooting star, or a comet, or you go to the zoo, and you see a gorilla, a gorilla beating its chest and clapping its hands. I made a bracha, Mishana Habriot. God, you have such strange, wonderful creatures in your world. Doing a mitzvah to zoo. <coughs> so anytime you're moved by a beautiful mountain, Avram, you know, like you went to see the Swiss Alps, you should have made a bracha, if you made a bracha. Also, Masa or any beautiful mountain, or beautiful meadow, or Niagara Falls, or the Grand Canyon, make a bracha, also Masa Bereshis. That's called Bechat Shevach Vahaydaya. That's called the bracha praising the Creator for His wonderful world. So any mundane act, we can capture it and what, Dr. Hackett? Elevated. Beautiful. Elevated. So even a gorilla that beats its chest can be what? A holy experience. Could I repeat that? A gorilla beating its chest, which I saw when he looked at me, can be a holy experience. Because why? I made a bracha on it. I realized the incredible wisdom that Kurdish Baruch Hu gave this gorilla. When he looked at me, he went like this. Who's boss? <laughs> that's right. That's what it means, right? Yep. <coughs> Who's boss? Where does a 600 pound gorilla sit? Wherever he wants. <laughs> right? Yes? No. Give me an example. There are three like types of brachas. Like you like this, so you if it moves you, so, I mean, you have to be moved. I no, give me an example. You go to a zoo, you see an exceptional uh, animal like an ape, a gorilla, or an elephant, or a beautiful peacock. There's not lavatala. This is, you're praising the Creator. You're elevating that magic moment into Kedusha. So a trip to the zoo can it be a holy experience. If what? If you look at it, you, you turn it into a holy experience. If you bring it back to its source, who made the beautiful peacock? You know, a peacock wants to uh, impress its mate. What does she do? He, what does he do? Opens up. He. Right? Right, who makes him do that? Who makes him do that? The big boss. So we acknowledge that with a bracha, Zizel. So excuse me. Yes? No, one bracha. Okay. One bracha per visit per 30 days. Okay. One, one bracha, I have in mind all the beautiful creatures, Mishana Habriot, once in 30 days. Is okay? The, no, okay, Niagara Falls and Mountains, that's once in 30 days. That's once in 30 right. days. Right. What about st uh, storms? What about storms? One per storm. The Mishnah Burr says one per storm. Mm -hmm. There's nine storms a day, as long as they're different storms, different brachas, but one per storm. One per storm. But if it's a storm later in the day, it's a different storm, you can do it again. Okay? But we see how all mundane acts can be elevated into Kedusha. You see rain, and you're impressed, it's a dancing rain, you make a Shechayanu, and you're elevating, you're elevating that, uh, that what? That experience. Rain can be a wonderful experience, you just have to know, right? So, so we make a bracha on any mitzvah ben Odom la mokom. What about giving tzedakah, Zizel? What's a greater mitzvah, putting on tefillin or giving tzedakah? Putting on tzedakah is a greater mitzvah, tzedufer. Anytime you do a mitzvah being Odom la it's also a mitzvah for Hashem. So why is there no bracha for giving tzedakah, Avram? Or bikecholim? Why? It's a mitzvah in the Torah to visit the sick, to, co to comfort the mourner, 
to give tzedakah, why is there no bracha? It's a greater mitzvah than the Odom Amakaim. Why is it greater to you? Because you're putting on tefillin who you're pleasing. Hashem. When you're doing a chesed for a human being, who you're pleasing? The human being and Hashem. The Balatanya points out it's twice as good. So why is there no bracha? Hmm? And the Rambam points out that only mitzvah between man and God do you make a bracha. But a mitzvah between man and man there is no bracha. He doesn't say why. Otherwise I'd be unemployed. He just says that, right, then you don't want that, right? You only make a bracha between a, a bracha between man and God. Like sitting in a sukkah, going to the mikvah for a lady, shaking your lule, blowing the shaifa. But a mitzvah of tzedakah, keep it of aim. You do a mitzvah for your parents, it's a great mitzvah, keep it of aim. And there's no bracha. He doesn't say why. This lady, you want to say why? I would say that, that because you're doing it yourself, you're not, you know, it's something that you have free will to do that. You have free will to put on tefillin or not. What do you mean, free will? You have free will to put on tefillin too, no? No, but that's something that Hashem wants us to do. Hashem, Hashem wants us to, to give tzedakah too and honor our parents too. So why don't we make a bracha? That's begging the question. Thank you, but why? Yeah. You the question, Zisel? The other person may not like it or need it. Oh! So Zisel gave the answer. The Kesef Mishnah says what you're saying. The lady said, Zisel gave. Kesef Mishnah says, Because when Adam and Chaveiro, it's totally Badas Acherim. The bracha for mitzvah has to be done a second before you do the mitzvah. If you make it earlier or later, to bracha Batala. So you make a bracha. The gift to Dhaka happened to me in Gula. I didn't make a bracha, but the guy threw back the half shekel on my face. Actually hit me on the forehead. I'm not joking. Good thing you have a hard head. I gave him a half shekel, he threw it back at me. Two of you happened. I would have made a bracha, what a bracha of a So since what? Zisel was right, as Kesa Mishra says, any mitzvah that depends on the other guy, the other guy might refuse the favor. And you have to make the bracha, Ebenezer, a minute before you do the mitzvah. If you make it too early or too late, it's a blessing in vain. Taking God's name in vain. Every time you make a bracha of Atala, says Rambam, thou shalt not take my name in vain. You know that. So therefore the rabbis say, take no chances. You get the mitzvah anyway, don't make a bracha. Because the other person might what? The other person might what? Refuse. You hear this? Now I'm not joking. Yaakov Emden, you heard this stuff too of you, Yaakov Emden, I wouldn't repeat what he said, he says, the mitzvah provu, the mitzvah, the mitzvah to make love to your wife. Not a joke, it's a provu. Even though it does not result in the birth of a child, Tolstos in Chagiga and Bava Basra says that every time you have marital relations with your spouse, you're doing the mitzvah provu, even though it does not result in what? In the birth of a child, did you know that? So why don't you make a bracha? He says, he says, maybe she'll say, oh, I just got a headache all of a sudden. It's not a joke. I made the bracha, and all of a sudden she got a headache. It happens. So it's a bracha of Atala. You hear the time, remember? Yaakov Emden, don't look at me, okay? You left for a blessing in vain, so therefore, Chazal will not metakein a bracha for pruvu, or for any mitzvah, ben odam or the other person might refuse the favor, and you have to make the bracha right before you do the mitzvah, and you're left holding Hashem's name in vain. And therefore, Chazal will not attack in bracha, ben what? Ben Adam lechaveiro. Of course, there's another answer. One down, two of your 69 others. I won't give you all 69 now. But the Torah Tamima has a very interesting insight. He says, normally ben Adam lechaveiro, the guy needs help, right? He's sick. He's down and out. Nicham Avelam Lo Yelenu Tzedaka. He said, Boruch Atu Hashem Lo Kedim Melech Oilam. You're making a bracha, my Tzoros. The guy is sitting Shiva Lo Yelenu. Or he's down and out and you're giving him Tzedaka. Or you're helping him in a bad situation. You're going to make a bracha. It's like you're making a bracha on the guy's troubles. It's like you're stechinging him. So therefore what? Make no brachas. You hear what he says? And he, he takes it even further. Some people when they, before they do a bracha, they make the bracha with great kavana. 
This guy needs a tzedakah now. You're going to start being from Baruch Ato Hashem, Elkeinu Melech Oilam, Mitzvah Tzedakah, with all the kavanas. Meanwhile, the guy is what? Starving for a handout. So the rabbis say, Daniel, how do you say, Merchel Toivis? Merchel Toivis, how do you say that? What? That's why no brachas. Deep human insight. The guy Loyalenu is sitting in Shiva. You're going to make a bracha? It's like you, 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 you're rubbing in his Taurus. Look how sensitive halacha is to somebody's feelings. That Chazal will not betake in a berchat mitzvah in Olam Echaveroi because the other guy might think you're making a bracha on his troubles. Or you might make the bracha too long and he's waiting for the favor. <clears throat> and then he might die, like... Remember the story yeah. of Gamzu? Yeah. Remember? Pretty... The guy look, was so hungry, he died. He died before the, the rabbi had a chance to unpack his, uh, his saddlebags. Pretty incredible, right? Mm. Now, <clears throat> there are two brachas that come from the Torah. Berchat HaMozon and Berchat HaTorah. Berchat HaMozon is a bracha. When you eat and you're satisfied, you have to bench me Torah. But if you look at the people wonder, what about when you sit in the sukkah, do you make a bracha? Leshev sukkah. When you live in a sukkah, living in Eretz is a bigger mitzvah than living in a sukkah. Why is it no bracha Yishev Eretz Yisrael? Have you had a question on the table? What's a greater mitzvah? Living in a sukkah or living in a remote? Remote. Remote, much greater mitzvah. Right? Buy one, get 613. Right? Sifri tells us, Chava, in Devorim, chapter 12, that living in Israel is the greatest mitzvah of all. Should I quote you the Hebrew? Shukula, Yeshivat et Yisrael, Shukula, Keneget, Kolamit, Tushabat Torah. So if there's a mitzvah to live in a sukkah, Bila Hakam, there's no bracha. It's a bracha, Leishev a sukkah. Why is there no bracha, Leishev Eretz Israel? You had a question? Yeah. So one answer is that I heard from Rabbi Yaakov Peretz, the Rosh Koyal of the, of the Kabbalah Yeshiva in the Rova. He says, look at the benching. Benching is a Torah mitzvah. What do you say in the benching? Baruch Ato Hashem. Every time you bench, it's a bracha for living in Eretz Israel. Baruch Ato Hashem, Allah Oretz, Allah Mazon. First you mention Oretz, and then you mention what? The falafel. Oretz HaTova. So, Billah, have in mind, you can have a falafel for lunch, or you have any, when you bench, have in mind, you're doing a two for Zizel. You're praising God for what? For the holy bagel, holy bagel, get it? And also for living in Harnof, I mean in Pisgat Zev, I mean in Kiyad Moshe. And I wouldn't repeat this, Avram, but I heard this from Yaakov Peretz, Shlita, in Mukubal, he has a yeshiva in Mukubal, in the, the Rova. He said, if you bench in Chutz Loretz, Ula is a bracha la vatala. Yuda. That's what he said. Because how could you say Baruch Hashem Al Oretz Hatova when you are benching in Shnora in Shnora Park? It's not Oretz Hatova. Oretz Al Mozan. So he says, "Let him eat cake." Remember who said that? Yeah. Let him eat cake. Let him eat cake. He says maybe they shouldn't bench in Staten Island. I mean in uh, Amarillo, Texas, because it's a bracha levatala. You're taking Hashem's name in vain. He said Ulai. He covered himself. I wasn't sure. Ulai, what does that mean perhaps? But that's what he said. But he said, that's the bracha. Every time you bench, first you mention Oretz HaTova before what? Before the Holy Bagel. Now I'm not joking when I say Holy Bagel. Two of you, the Zohar HaKadosh, we're over 40, we can talk Zohar. The Zohar HaKadosh says that every time you eat the produce of Eretz Yisrael, you're ingesting the Kedusha of the man. So every time you eat a bagel in Eretz Yisrael, it's a, it's a holy bagel. Maybe the holy bagel company should give a, a copyrights to the Zohar Kodosh. 
because any food that you eat in Israel says the Zohar Kodesh has the Kedusha of what? Man! Any food has the Kedusha of man. Right, we didn't have man in, in, in Eretz Israel. Because you have a holy bagel, it's holier than the man. So it's taka holy bagel, Yudah, it's taka holy bagel. Isn't that incredible? The Zohar Kodesh says this, that the produce of Eretz Israel and the Bach in the Yoridea says something amazing. Tuvia, the Bach says something incredible. By the old circus riding in the 1600s in Poland, that every time you ingest the produce of Eretz Israel, you're taking in the Shechina. You heard this? A Bach, Bait Chadash, by the old circus. He writes in Hilchas Brachas that every time you're ingesting the produce of Eretz Israel, you're taking the Shechina inside of you. Amazing. And the produce here is so much more tasty. My mother, Alea Shalom, she came to visit me. And she ate the, the, the food here, the fruits and veggies. And then when she went back to Brooklyn, she said, Listen, what did you do to me? All the fruits and veggies taste like wood now. She ate the fruits and veggies in Pisgadzev. She said she came back to Flatbush. She couldn't. She said, It's like eating wood. She never knew that fruits and veggies can taste so delicious. We have to appreciate that. Isn't that incredible? Wow. Now, the Vilna Gon, who's a great lover of Israel, you know, he tried to come here, he got shipwrecked. His Talmidim came here before Herzl. His Talmidim came here in 1802, way before Herzl. He tried to come here, Yehuda, he couldn't, he got shipwrecked. By, he loved it. So he says, if you look at the bracha, motzi lechem min ha'aretz. Is that proper upan 103? You know Hebrew. See, motzi lechem min ha'adama. What do you mean, motzi lechem min ha'aretz? Motzi lechem min ha'adama. Why do you chazal make the bracha, motzi lechem min, not ha'aretz, ha'aretz. Ha'aretz, not the newspaper. Lahabdil. Ha'aretz. The extra hey ha'yidiya, the two of you. Says the Vilna Gon. Hamotzi lechem, not mino adama, min aretz. Any food that you eat, you're only eating it in the schus of Eretz Yisrael. You're having a bagel where? In Lakewood. It's because of Eretz Yisrael. Hamotzi lechem, min aretz. You're eating food all over the world in the schus of aretz. In the schus of Eretz Yisrael. Because Hashem's bounty comes from here first. And from here, it, I think it's called the trickle down theory. What? What? That's what the Vilna Gaon says. That's why it's a moti lechem in Aretz and not a moti lechem in Adama. That would be more proper grammar, right? Right? But what happens now because the Arabs burned so much of our land this year? What happens It's a test. World? It's a test. Now look how much Hashem loves us. Please hear me well. All of the fruits and veggies could have tasted like what? Like potatoes. We would eat it anyway because we need the vitamins. Why does all fruit and veggies have its unique color, unique flavor, unique odor, unique smell? Why is that? Everything, everything could have tasted like potatoes. Eat it anyway because you need the vitamins. So look how much Hashem loves us. A shiny red apple. It's gift wrapped, Yehuda. Shiny red apple, an orange orange, a yellow apple, a granny apple. All its delicious, unique taste, unique smell, unique odor and flavor. Why does God do that? Tell me why. To show how much He loves me. Don't you see? How much He loves me. He wants to entertain me. Yes, let us entertain you. Otherwise, everything could have tasted like cod liver oil. But you think about it. When you make a bracha, you pick up a shiny red apple. You're supposed to examine it. Look at the, I the shine. It shines. Gift wrapped. Unique smell and flavor and taste. Look how much he loves me. Some of us, it was too good. That's why it probably proved Ah. It's an amazing Yishalmi in Kiddushin. Now people make mistakes to you. You ask, 
What's the first mitzvah a human being got? People say, don't eat that tray for tree, right? It's not true. The postage right before that, Mikol Eitzagan Ochal Tochal. If Shalom, people if you ask anybody, even Talmud Chochem, the first mitzvah, they'll say, Hashem said, don't eat that tree. It's not true. The postage right before that, Hashem said, Mikol Eitzagan Ochal Tochal. Es mein Kind. Es mein. Not you. You should eat. Never one tree, you can't. What about the 99,000 others? Es mein Kind. How do you say that in English? Es mein Kind. Ochal Tochal. Look at the text. People forget that. Hashem commands us to what? Enjoy His world. So much so, Yishalmi Kiddushin says, esrim. A person has to give a din v'cheshbon for all the delicious food that he did not enjoy. Yishalmi Sof Kiddushin. You can look it up. Hashem wants us to enjoy His beautiful world. To appreciate because he made it just for me. Bishvili Nivra Olam. Mishnah Sanhedrin, page 37. Chava. Bishvili Nivra Olam. What does that mean? The shiny red apple and the delicious orange and love Clementinos. He created the world. Just for me. That's what the Mishnah says. Every human being has to know that. And therefore, we have to be madly in love with the one above and to appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much.